Hey y'all, welcome back and thanks for stopping by. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing y'all how I made a very rustic farmhouse cloche out of chicken wire. So let's get started. For the base of the large cloche, I used a 10 inch terracotta saucer that I picked up at Walmart, turned it upside down and gave it two good coats of apple barrel paint in the color beachcomber beige. Just a quick side note here, I would definitely recommend painting the saucers after measuring and shaping the chicken wire because I did end up having to go back in and repaint the saucer again because the chicken wire did scratch the paint up some. For the base of the smaller cloche, I repeated the same paint process on a 6 inch terracotta saucer that I also picked up at Walmart. Once the paint was completely dry, I took some Waverly chalk paint in the color white and a chip brush from Dollar Tree and heavily dry brushed the white paint all over the saucer. To create the dome of the cloche, I used some 10 by 2 poultry netting that I picked up in the garden section at Walmart for around $4. Using the large saucer and the first raised lip on the side as a guide, I carefully wrapped the netting all the way around the outside of the saucer, making sure the mesh overlapped by one opening and then used my wire cutters to cut the piece off of the roll, making sure to leave a small amount of wire sticking out so I could tie the dome together. Please make sure if you recreate these cloches to wear some good gloves. This wire is very sharp and will definitely cut you. Once I had the piece of netting cut, I wrapped it around the saucer where it needed to sit, then using some needle nose pliers, I wired the netting together to create a cylindrical shape. I did this by using the pieces of the netting that were left sticking out from where I want to take this time to say thank you to all my wonderful subscribers. Y'all mean the absolute world to me. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? I would love it if you would click that button and stick around for a little bit because I have a bunch of fun projects on the way. Once I had the netting wired together all the way up to the top, I then decided how tall I wanted the dome to be. I used my wire cutters to cut in a straight line all the way around the top of the netting. I also made sure to leave the dome a little bit taller than what I wanted it to be once it was completely finished. I did this so that I would have the right height once I cut and bent down the top to form the top of the cloche.
Next, I took my needle nose pliers and went along the back seam where I wired the netting together and squished the two pieces together so that it would look less messy and more like one solid piece. To close the top of the dome, I used my wire cutters to cut the top into four sections so they could easily be bent down and wired together to create the top of the cloche. Next, I bent all four sections down so they would completely close the top of the cloche. Then, using my needle nose pliers and the cut ends of the netting, I wired the cloche closed. Again, please, if you do this project, protect your hands and wear a good pair of gloves. I repeated the same process using the 6 inch saucer to create the dome for the smaller cloche. Once I had both domes completed, I took them outside and gave them one good coat of Rust-Oleum hammered spray paint in the color copper to give them a more rustic look. To create the handles for the top of the cloches, I used two shower curtain rings from Dollar Tree and used hot glue to wrap them with jute cord from Walmart.
Once the chicken wire domes were completely dry, I used some Gorilla Hot Glue to glue the handles into place on top of the cloches. I did try to get them as close to centered as possible. I also went back in once the glue was completely dry and reinforced the rings from the inside of the dome. I am absolutely in love with the way these rustic farmhouse chicken wire cloches turned out. I think they are so beautiful and they look absolutely wonderful with my rustic kitchen decor. I styled them up with a little bit of boxwood and fake apples for the large cloche and some raffia and fake eggs for the small cloche. I would definitely suggest not using real food in these cloches since we did use paint on them. Let me know what y'all think of these cloches in the comments below. And if you like this project and would like to see more like it, please give this video a thumbs up because it really does help out my channel. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and check me out on Instagram. That info is in the description box below. I'll see y'all next time.